When I was first approached about writing Always By My Side, the original idea was to write about the journey as a sports journey, going from broadcasting the Super Bowl to the Final Four to the Masters in a nine-week span, in a 63-day stretch. I didn't think it was going to be interesting to anyone. Uh, I knew there was a lot of hard work for me just to get through those uh, real treasured championships of American sport, but what's the hook for people? And then someone said, well, why don't you write about your dad? You know, how you wish your dad could be with you on this ultimate father-son sports journey. Well, as soon as someone attached my father to the book idea, you know, I started to get energized by it. And what it evolved into was my father was incapable of being with me for that nine-week stretch. But I was going to find my father through others. It really what it was is I recognized my father's greatness through the goodness and the greatness of others, whether it be a coach or a former president or a colleague. They had become all the things that my father used to be. But now, since he didn't even know who he was, and at this stage of his life, really by 2007, he could barely even speak. You couldn't even understand. It was all gibberish when he spoke. So. The book had a very strong message about generations in the respect between generations that sometimes I think that we lose a little bit in our culture. I was just raised as a young boy to respect the people above me, my elders, the generation, the generation above that. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that I grew up working at cleaning golf clubs, playing around golf courses, being around the golf culture where there was a certain etiquette involved. We weren't country club people, but I was working at a club so that I had access to play golf. And I just learned through my parents, especially, and also through golf, just a, a code of honor, just a basic human decency and respect with the way that you treat people, the way you address people. I was raised in a yes sir, no sir environment. So my father wasn't around to be able to give me the kind of advice that I was seeking. But I could turn to a colleague, a friend, a mentor, a guiding light, a surrogate, and all of them became my father in a way. They didn't know it maybe, but they represented my father. And that's why I came up with the title, Always By My Side. My father is figuratively still and always will be by my side. And I think it was an important message for people to, to hear. Uh, you know, there are a lot of young people, sadly, who grow up and never even know their father. But you can find that father figure. And it doesn't have to just be one person. It can be a, a composite, a collection of people who are there, who you trust, you admire, you respect with the way, the way that they do things. And you learn from them, and you draw from them. You extract the goodness from them, and you apply it to your own life. That was the real message behind Always By My Side. My father was there on that long road trip from the Super Bowl through the Final Four in the NCAA tournament to the Masters because I found them through others.